when you're trying to be fancy, but you have off-brand Dayquil in the background. Very cool, very profesh. What is up, guys? Welcome back. Today is the first episode of my new series that I'm calling Sticker Shock, where it's not necessarily about new products from super luxury brands. It's more about, is this luxury brand as it exists in all of its popularity and its best products and what have you, is the hype worth the crazy price tag on a lot of these things? And we are starting with one that is truly <laughs> like the highest price tag pretty much at Sephora. Don't quote me on that, but it definitely gave me sticker shock. And that is your good friend, Tom Ford. As you guys know, we have only just recently like moved into this entire echelon of the beauty space. And I am not pickled in the luxury beauty, like expectations or anything like that. I just don't have a ton of experience with these kinds of formulas and they are a little bit different in a lot of different ways. And so please, if there are things that you feel like would fill in the blanks, <laughs> some of the things that I'm curious about, absolutely leave those in the comments. I have super appreciated all the information that I've gotten from you guys so far, but I got the Traceless Foundation Stick. I got two of these lip glosses, the Gloss Lux. You guys educated me last time that Excuse means exquisite in French, so thank you so much. And then I also picked up Love Lust, which is in English, God bless them. And uh, I also got a blush duo. This is the Shade and Illuminate blush in Brazen Rose. This is the component, ooh, ah. They come in those like adorable little pouches that are, they serve no purpose whatsoever in my life. And I have gotten quite a bit of use out of this. This is by no means a first impression on any of these formulas. And then I picked up two eyeshadow quads because I started with the 01 Naked Pink Soleil one, I don't know. It's just in the white packaging and it looks like that. And I thought that that really looked like me in a quad capsule, but some of you guys, we've talked about this already, said that that formula is a little underwhelming to you and that I should, if I was going to, you know, provide kind of a more well-rounded review, also talk about the wet to dry formula. So I got the eye color quad in body heat, which is another kind of fan favorite. So. I'm gonna move you guys in. I'm going to share with you my experience with these so far and apply them the way that I've been making them work for me best. And then we will get into like the pricing and the claims and everything like that. And I will close with my final thoughts on each individual product as to whether they are worth the crazy price tag because that is the whole reason you came to this video. So let's go ahead and jump in. <laughs> Okay, so the way that I've been using the Traceless Foundation Stick, I got it in 0, 0.0 Pearl, and it is a very good undertone match for me, but it is quite bright. So I've been using it kind of in the high points of my face and then using the Fenty Body Sauce to just deepen it where I need it so I don't end up really ghostly because then I end up putting on more makeup than I really want to, kind of trying to like close the gap. So that's what we're going to start with. And a lot of times, I end up going in with this too, with uh, like a concealer brush and just kind of dusting it on the top like that because it's high, high, high pigment. It's really fantastic. The formula is really gorgeous, but I'm gonna talk about some of the like, I don't know, the misgivings that I have about it, but let's go ahead and just do a little bit of that. <laughs> so I would, you know, typically have the lightest portion where I have pigment and where it's gonna blend into my neck. By the way, before I get any frantic comments, which I probably already have, this is an acrylic sweater. It's machine washable, so like, it already has makeup on it, I guess, from the last time I wore it, but it's indestructible. Don't, don't fret. It's not some kind of like cashmere dry clean only thing that I'm ruining getting makeup on it. <coughs> Woo! You know what? We might need some of that day quill. Sorry, sorry. I just don't wanna be coughing through the whole video. Mm. Hate it. Ga 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 ga. Nah. Okay. Woo. Ha ha. And uh, where's my body sauce? There it is. Man, that is just the gift that keeps on giving, isn't it? Yikers. So, kind of around here, up here, and body sauce a little goes a long way. And I'm just like not super. <laughs> That's a vibe. I'm just not super into a ton ton of coverage where I don't need it, you know? Like I'm not about having to 
retrace my steps and like draw my face back on if I don't have to. Where's my Beauty Pie foundation brush? Oh, it's all the way over there. Thank goodness life got monkey toes. Oh, I'm getting myself a foot cramp. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> all right, Zoobly Zoo, let's do this. So, the misgiving that I have with this formula in particular is that while it is gorgeous, while it is smoothing, while it is high coverage, it doesn't really want to set down a whole lot. <laughs> I don't know why. It just, it seems like it's going to have all of the beautiful dry down technology in the world to it. And it just doesn't for some reason. It kind of stays a little bit molten on my skin because the urge with a stick foundation is to go for full coverage. I would love to recommend this stick as an ideal foundation formula for your wedding day, for example, because it's gonna be beautifully photographable and long wearing. It is beautifully photographable. Long wearing, I just, I can't, I can't necessarily endorse that claim. And I don't know whether they make that claim, but it just feels for all other purposes, like that's what it is supposed to do. And it just, it falls flat in that one thing. Like it's very, very hydrating, but it's, it stays present, it stays molten, you know, in a way that it's just not what I expected. And I talked to Amanda over there in the closet earlier this morning and she bought the other one, the other foundation. So this one has 39 shades. The other one is like the supposedly matte, but she says that it's not really that matte. It has 40 shades. I don't know which one they skipped, but she said that that was the same issue with that one is that it's really, really gorgeous. And then it just like, for some reason, doesn't dry down. Like, come on, Tom Ford. <laughs> We're all working to Tom afford this. You can at least give us a little bit of a uh, dry down. Oh boy, yeah, I had that pun in my back pocket the whole time. I just had to get that out. It's like when you're trying to sneeze, you know? So, um, hmm. Okay, we're gonna balance this out a little bit. I probably shouldn't have put it like right there. There we go. And by it, I mean the Fenty body sauce. It's just like not a natural place for my face to be dark right there. There we go. Gonna, like I was saying, kind of dip my brush in there, fill in the details. And up close, I mean, yes, you know, we are also dealing with the beautiful smoothing superpowers of the Fenty body sauce, which it does have, but it still has a really, really beautiful finish on the skin on its own. And I don't have to grab a concealer. There's something really great about that. You know, it's very, very highly, highly concentrated in terms of the pigment. So a little goes a long way. I do feel like you really get your money's worth in that sense, but you know, you could also go buy like the Danessa Myricks complexion concentrate. That's not what it's called. That should be what it's called. I don't remember what it's called, but it's like this little tiny thing of makeup, but it is like the most concentrated complexion colors and you can thin them out however you please and you know, just do the most and that's only $22. So that's like real beautiful. It really is, it's so pretty. And I have enjoyed wearing it so far. $89 is wackadoodle off the charts. Like I always try to judge the performance of makeup without necessarily considering the price. A lot of times the price will influence the experience of using the makeup to me, but the formula should stand alone. But when it comes to a price point like this, I don't know, man, that's like my tipping point. I have to consider this within the context of the price that I paid for it. And yes, I paid for it. I, I just don't know if this formula stands alone as worth $89. Moving into a little bit of just contour. I will show you guys the blush on its own before I do any bronzer, but I wanna contour real quick before I start powdering because my contour is a cream. So I'm using the Patrick Ta. She's statuesque to just get a little bit of a contour moment here. Using BK106, I realize I don't mention my brushes often enough. BK has been so kind. They even sent me their little cute holiday gift set and it's got, I don't know, some of my favorite ones in there, but they really are such special brushes. They really, really perform. I need to kind of stay on top of the fact that a lot of brushes from, you know, companies that I love, like Wayne Goss, like they go out of stock all the time and they just like never come back. So one of my brushes that I'm just so, so into is that uh, O2 brush, the really, the really big fat one. 
I don't have it right now, but that's okay because it like doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> I'm like, okay, Wayne, <laughs> like, you know, I fall in love with your beautiful brushes and then I can't even like recommend them to people. That's no fun. Okie dokie, let's touch with just a little bit of powder so that this goes on somewhat evenly. Let me use some hourglass just because no one can accuse me of going high low. <laughs> It's like, oh, you have to use it with something else that's exquisite. Okay, I will. A lot of times with a foundation like this, I want to be able to wear it with just creams. That was like the one thing that I felt like I had kind of a hang up with on it. Okay, so again, I got this in Brazen Rose. It is a combo of a nice neutral, dusty rose color. And then if you can see that, it's like got speckles in it, which, it's a little bit foreshadowing because why are we still putting carmine in blush formulas? It malfunctions, okay? It's not some kind of, you know, like opinion about vegan crushing beetles in your makeup because that's what carmine is. It's about the fact that carmine, when it hits certain things in my makeup, it makes little red dots. It looks like someone sprayed little bits of red paint on my face. It happened with the Kosas blushes before they reformulated and made them vegan. And I've just never really noticed any gain in a formula, any betterness in a blush formula for having carmine in it. Like, why are we still using it? And this is a very expensive blush, you know? And it's like for it to do that feels like a deal breaker, even though it's very, very pretty, you know? Super, super easy to work with. And I am just dipping a giganto brush in here. This is the BK102. And I'm dipping it in both sides for now. And just kind of mixing them together. But like I can just use that like light pink right on the top of my cheeks, get kind of a snow bunny situation going. And even though these are pale, they're very saturated. Not super pigmented, but very saturated. And like it, you know, shows up very, very true to the color in the pan on the skin. I really don't have a very good understanding of why some do and some don't. Like Saint Cosmetics just sent me a bunch of their stuff that I have not, you know, known about basically since the last time I reviewed them. And they sent me this beautiful palette. It's gorgeous, but like the colors look completely different on my skin than they do in the pan. And so I'm having trouble kind of getting my head around it before I review it. <laughs> I put it on, I'm like, whoa, that's so much darker than it looks in the pan. And it's not so much that like I can't work with it, it's just that it's it's just hard to know what you're getting yourself into, like one color to the next when that's the case. So, I adore this colorway. I love it. It's so wearable, it's blurring, it's so easy. I just don't understand the Carmine thing, you know? And I've learned that that's what does that. It gives me that, like, you know, the, the red dots. It's funny, I have, I admit, you know, I don't necessarily like stay completely versed on every single beauty YouTuber out there, but I have never heard anyone complain about that phenomenon other than my comments. People say it does that to me too, but like other beauty creators, I've never heard anyone complain about Carmine doing that to them. I, I would have thought it would be kind of universal. Like, is, do I have some kind of strange like chemical in my skin? I do not know. All right, I'm going to use the Well People bronzer because I want something that is going to not be super, super matte. So this is the Well People Golden Hour Super Powder. If I used my Gucci right now, it would just keep blurring and flattening and kind of give me almost a cakey appearance. And I want just a little bit of like light refract refraction to um, bring some life back into my skin. And this mineral formula really does that. Plus it's, it's got a lot of impact, you know, for it looking as dark as it is, like it's not that dark, but it does have a good amount of impact on my skin. Makes a difference. Yeah, that's better. The Tom Ford is quite velvet and I'm gonna use, you know, a setting spray at the end anyway and change all the textures, but just for the sake of what my eye wants to see right now. Speaking, of eyes, let's talk about these eye palettes because there are a few things we need to touch on. One is I wanna get in before everybody asks me or tells me that I should have gotten the little cream pots with the, the toppers. 
Yeah, I forgot about those and they're so, so beautiful. They're so beautiful, but like at the same time, I, I mean, Amanda sings their praises all the time. I'm sure that they are super lovely. I'm sure that they're incredible. And maybe since Sephora <laughs> is having another VIB sale, um, maybe I'll pick one of those up. I didn't really like the one that's like pewter colored. I'm just not a, you know, cool tone silvery person. Uh, as far as my eyeshadows go, it makes my eyes look really tiny, but maybe I'll pick up one of the like warmer, easier to wear for me ones uh, during that sale. But uh, I do know that they come highly recommended. This I was just more curious about because I don't hear about them that often. So here is our eye color quad in naked pink. I really dug my fingers in there and it is a combination of low pigment and these colors being super close to my skin tone. So that kind of makes for an oddly perfect storm of when I put them on, I'm like, where did they go? <laughs> and I don't really mind it. It's kind of funny because categorically, right? We can talk about low pigment and lack of impact being something that makes for a disappointing formula, but I do find myself continuing to reach for these and I don't really can't explain why. I think that it's just kind of like super, super, super personal. Like it's just so native to my personal complexion that it's like the most user-friendly, brain dead, check out, put it on my eyes kind of thing that I can possibly do. And I swear, like, it doesn't matter how much of this I put on, it, it just is never like too much. So I will start with these and then I will swatch the other ones for you and we'll kind of deepen the look with it. But the wet to dry formula, the dry to wet formula is oh, just, just a whole different animal. All right, I'm going to start with a BK201, this, you know, just very universal, easy to use dome crease brush type thing. So in this palette, there's a, a matte, two kind of satins, and then this celestial. And the celestial is very much what you would expect. Very uh, Wayne Goss, uh, Auric, um, Charlotte Tilbury, that texture that we all know and love. So I'm starting with that satin kind of pinky copper. And I'm gonna work kind of all over with it. It's very blushy with like a hint of like a yellow orange to it. So it's peachier, I guess. But like, I don't have to tap my brush off. You know what I mean? There is no caution here. And I'm really building local color kind of all the way around my crease and then blending that up and out. We talked about this before, but I will obviously say it for everybody, this being your first video of mine or anything. Something that I've discovered using Gucci eyeshadows, these eyeshadows, Chanel eyeshadows, the pigmentation is different. It is a more mature type formula, meaning it is less about how it looks, you know, as a steal the show kind of enter the room before you kind of pigmentation situation. Like, you know, it's not Pat McGrath, but it also works better, I believe, on mature and maturing skin because the shimmers are more subtle and easier to control. And the fact that the pigmentation is a little bit lower just kind of speaks to a different customer. It's just a customer who's like, hey, I wanna wear makeup, but I don't want it to be like the main thing that someone notices about me. But the Gucci one also has like bright blues in it. Like the options exist. I think that they do understand that their customers have a like a wide age range, but they do still want to make sure that they cater to a more mature customer first, if that makes sense. I, that would be my kind of like intuition after using the formulas. And there's something to be said about the conciseness of these. They all still seem to target a on the go type person. They have, I mean, they had, you know, their own applicators in here and stuff. That's something that I see in pretty much all of the luxury products across the board is they're the only brands out there, like drugstore and super luxury are the only 
real brands that are still putting like mini applicators in their packaging because they are like, hey, these are your four eyeshadows. This is gonna be your every single day palette and we're assuming that you're doing your makeup on the go and you're touching up at lunch, you know? So it's just, a, it's just a different whole vibe. And I'm kind of trying to contextualize it within that too, because I need to understand that, you know, if I'm talking about Tom Ford as a brand, I'm probably talking to a slightly different customer too. And your expectations are probably, you know, more met by something like this. It's, you know, it's important to, it's important to know that. So I'm taking this little one, I love, I love this little brush. Actually, Amanda forced me to buy the Sephora 18 brush. And I think it's going to be really, really similar. I'll pull that out in a second. She did this thing where she, she texted me. Uh, the night that the sale was ending and she's like, all right, last call, what do I need? And I actually made her um, buy this. <laughs> she made me buy the uh, the brush, so. But what was really funny was I was like, what about this? She's like, I already have it. What, do you, what about this? I already have it. But that's because she lives in my closet and she's just constantly pilfering from my bathroom. So I've still only been working with one color here. I'm not a one and done gal in the sense of like smearing one thing all over my eyeballs and throwing mascara on because I personally like to doctor the shape of my eyes a little bit more than that with like eyeliner and whatnot. And I do like to play with shadow and light and that's the one part of my face that lends itself really, really well to it. But you still can get a lot of dimension out of one shade in this because the satin is not very sparkly. It's not distorting the light in your crease. You know, the way that a lot of things that like look like that in the pan would. Like if that was an aether shade, you could very much rely on the fact that it would, it would get in the crease and it would just like whoop how, you know what I mean? It would like refract light and be totally like party on your eyeballs. But there's something to be said for something not being that way, as long as you have your expectations set properly. So really using this to like define the shape of my socket because I like to make sure that I'm using like this real estate right here, because there's a lot of it. I've got large temples. <laughs> you know, use that to kind of go upwards a little, make my eyes look a little farther apart. That's the one thing you notice when you compare a baby picture of me to a baby picture of my baby is like, oh, oh, your eyes were really close together. Mm-hmm. They were. <laughs> my husband's like, yee. <laughs> Glad that kind of corrected a little bit. I looked like a bird. No, what would I look like? Is it a bird? What has really close together eyes? I don't know, those cats that look like Dewey from uh, Malcolm in the Middle? Kind of like that. My mother's like, you did not stop it. You were perfect. So dem dare dat dare. And um, I'm gonna use this like, you know, shimmery beige here. And I'm gonna use that. It's again, it's not shimmery. It's just satin. And it's like the most true satin. You know, you think about satin. Satin's kind of like a softened looking, you know, silk, like a, almost like a matte silk. And uh, yeah, that's, that's what that does. That's what that texture does on my eyes. And I'm just gonna blend that, not all the way up to the brow bone because it's not light enough to be a brow bone highlight. But then again, I don't really know how much the like luxury beauty space believes in like a brow bone highlight. I think that that's more of a phenomenon of YouTube makeup. They're like, make it go pow and make it go pow and give me a highlight. You know, I just don't see a lot of that in, in this space. Okay. And then fi finally, I don't know. I think I'll throw a little bit of the matte like right there in the crease, just to show you guys what it looks like, because it does have an effect on my skin. <laughs> I do not think that this would really show up in a very like useful way if you're much darker than me, because like you're not going to get a shadow out of it. Like if you're looking for just a gray tan on your eyeballs, sure. But like, I don't know, man, it's, it's not going to build an illusion, but on me, it, it do. And that's something too, that I've like heard about like different brands, right? So <sighs> Chanel, Chanel has put out some stuff now where their lines have a lot more shades in them, but they didn't for a long time. And when I posted about it on my Instagram stories, I had French people in my, in my DMs being like straight up, French people are racist. French brands are racist. And this was French people telling me this. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> like, I feel like I have a better understanding of like the cultural climate now, you know? And, um, and I'm glad that like, you know, they're coming around, but it's just kind of the, like the historical context is something that is so completely new to me. Okay. We're going to take this, um, 
celestial shade here. It's beautiful. It's really, really pretty. And I'm going to really go in. Look at that. That's a great celestial shade. It really is. It's better than the Charlotte Tilbury one by a mile. Feels really, really nice. You know, and if that was your look every day, and that's, you know, what you wanted to see your eyes looking like every single day. And it was the one palette that kind of answered that for you. Maybe that's worth the money to you, you know? And I wanted to show it in action because I think it's easy when we are so steeped in pigment equals quality to just judge this right on its face and be like, no, sorry, this is a dud. I just keep reaching for it, you know? And that's kind of how I know that something is hitting me differently is when it installs itself in the flash memory of my brain and goes, no, 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 you got this. Like, we're definitely using that. And it's just kind of a no brainer. That was the word I was looking for earlier. What did I say? I said brain dead. I meant no brainer. There's a lot of irony there. We're not even gonna go there. Let's talk about the other one. So again, this is the O3 Body Heat. And one of y'all messaged me, actually several of y'all messaged me and like put it in the comments and stuff. They're like, you're gonna like the wet to dry formula better. So I'm gonna go ahead and swatch these and I'm going to swatch them wet. Do you have pretentious Evian in a tiny atomizer? She heard the assignment. When I say that the way that this brush wet cooperates with those formulas is how I think. <laughs> Look at this. You can very clearly tell which ones are wet and which ones are dry. Those wet swatches are how I think. It makes me want to call up Hindash and be like, yo, I get it, man. I get, I get wanting to paint on the face. I get wanting to just apply your artistic mindset and go into a flow state, but just on the face. Because the way that those apply wet, it is intoxicating. So while I have, you know, all, all this on my eyeballs right now, we are still just gonna go on top of this because I, I need to show you the difference here. I'm really just probably gonna go with one shade and I'm just using this Thrive eyeshadow all over brush and spraying it with water. You can spray it with finishing spray or whatever. The thing I think that kind of makes a shadow wet to dry is that it doesn't hard pan when it gets wet. Hard panning is basically when it like solidifies over the top and it seals itself and then you're like, well, what do I do now? And you have to like scrape the makeup off. This goes from wet to like, then you can just dip a brush in it and use it dry again and it doesn't freak out basically. Like you can use just about any eyeshadow wet, but like these are very uniquely suited to it. Just, I mean, come on, look at that texture that it takes on on the skin. Guys, you were right, it's obsession worthy. I'm gonna just take that gorgeous pinky copper. That's very similar, actually. Let me swatch that. It's the most similar shade to the pinky copper that's in the other palette, but they are quite different. And I'm going to <clears throat> make sure this is focused. Yeah. See, that's just different. It's just different. <laughs> it's different in a way that I was not prepared for, but like in a good way. So, you know, you can just paint, 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 paint. And I have quite a wet brush doing that. I can wipe it off a little bit, dip it back in there. It's gonna be more saturated, but it'll still pick it up. And go underneath here. And the only thing I find about these is that it does make for something that's slightly more movable if it gets wet. I don't know why I know that. I definitely didn't spend all of last week crying, but they're not very cry proof. <laughs> oh boy, they're not Thrive. You know, Thrive is like waterproof. They're a lot harder to put on, but man, once they're on, they're not going anywhere. So 
This dries pretty quickly. It doesn't feel freaky, which is great because a lot of times like wet formulas, especially things that are like this impactful, <laughs> like a lot of times I'll put them on my eyes and I'm like, uh-oh. <laughs> that's a sensation. Like even the Victoria Beckham gives me a sensation on my eyes and this, this doesn't. So that's nice. So I'm just going to take a little bit of, I'm going to use this one, this really pretty kind of like warm taupe, not going full, full gray. And I'm just going to use that to blend and smoke that out. Just the very tip of the brush because the claim is wet to dry. <laughs> and that doesn't just mean it's wet and then it dries. It also means like you need to be able to get functionality out of both formulas. And that means painting it on, but then also being able to blend it really well. <laughs> Cause otherwise you do look a little bit nuts, you know, with just like these really, really hard lines around your eyes. But like, that gets the freaking job done, dude. All right, what I'm going to do now is just use a little bit of like my hourglass powder and clean up a little bit because that's what tends to happen when I'm kind of like, you know, layering looks and trying to show you guys multiple, multiple ideas with the same products is that things just start to get a little sloppy. So, uh, cleany, cleany, buffy, buffy, buffy the chaos slayer. I would typically use like a highlight to do all my inner corner work and everything. But I think I'll just use that celestial shade on a pencil brush and have that be it. You know what I mean? It'll just be a, like more of a texture. So picking that up on a, a Wayne Goss 05, which might be extinct, I have no idea. And I'm just using it to balance everything back out because the celestial is just kind of a, a lovely texture and so it, builds a gradient in a really believable way. So I can just kind of paint it right on top of where I put that really beautiful wet shadow. And it does a lot of the work for me of looking blended. I can even do it with my finger, just like a tiny bit. Brow bone. Yes. And if you're looking at this, like if, especially if this is my first video you're watching, it, uh, I know there's a lot of color on my face right now. <laughs> We're gonna pull it together. So I'm gonna do my eyeliner, my mascara, and my brows. I will be right back um, and we will do the lip glosses. I'll show you guys both of them. And then we will, you know, commence with the rest of the video. So I bet it's big. It'll be right big. Okay. The only thing that I have not done yet is lips and like a finishing spray. So I did end up, like I said, buying another one of these because I liked the formula a lot, but I wanted to see two shades. This is a $58 lip gloss, comes in 13 shades. I, I, I can only make the excuse that this is my job. And that is like why I felt the need to spring for that. But like, here we are. I'm gonna start with the new one because it's lighter. Let's see where we land here. So again, whoa, this is the shade Love Lust. Oh, hmm. Well, that is cool toned. I'm waiting for like my eyes to adjust. They're so pigmented. Yeah. That's like kind of fluorescent Miami lavender on me, isn't it? I might return that one. I don't like that. <laughs> ooh, ooh. I might try it with like a couple other makeup looks, but like this isn't the one <laughs> with it. And like I said, you're really throwing down the gauntlet when you ask me to part with that much money for a lip gloss. Like it better be exquisite. And like, that's, it's growing on me. My eyes are adjusting. It's just looking clear now. I have reservations. I do love the formula. It is very much like a liquid lip balm. You know, it's just got that nice slippy thing to it. And then this is, excuse, excuse me. 
A little bit vanilla -y smelling. I realized like my, the entire sense of smell was gone when I was doing the other Sephora videos. So I was like, nothing smells like anything. I was sick, <laughs> okay. That is such a good color, okay? And the, that's the thing here is with this formula, it is not just a shiny lip gloss moment, you know, where you're just like, it doesn't really matter what color it is because it kind of just pulls clear regardless. These are, you know, kind of like lipsticks in the sense that you should probably really take the shade pretty seriously because like it could go sideways like the other one did. But I, Love the combination of the liquid lip balm formula and the pigmentation quality because it means that it's actually going to wear better. It's not gonna run all over the place. Like it's a fantastic formula for being really bouncy without being sticky and also sticking around. Just like those magnets on the fridge. That's the vibe. Let's go ahead and spritz me. I actually, at the sale, the one of the last things that I ordered was a full size of the Dewey set. And then, and that was like, really didn't occur to me how similar it is to Mac Fix Plus. Like, it, it's just, Anastasia, come on, no, the same package. What? I'm definitely not the first person to notice that, but I did notice. Mm, but yeah, the Dewey, the Dewey set just smells like coconut, so. <sighs> All right, move y'all out. We're going to talk pricing on these and my sh final sh thoughts. Okay, we are on the Sephora website here. All right, like I said, Traceless Foundation Stick, $89. You get half of an ounce of it and there are 39 shades. They say that it is a natural finish, medium coverage, skin type normal and dry. So it is very, hydrating, glowy, unique cream foundation that creates a flawless, smooth finish. I wanna know what the reviews say. This is the only foundation that I keep buying after running, running out. Definitely recommend it if you feel comfortable splurging, but it lasts, and for me, it is a holy grail. Holy grail, holy grail, holy grail. Let's see what, like, some of the, like, four star. I'm a sucker for a foundation stick. This is the best one I found. Shade range works for me. It's not that much better than the Wet n Wild one. Love it. Creamy, radiant, but horribly emphasized dry areas. I've never had that with anything. So like, I, you know what I mean? Can't relate. And it's hard for me to really judge that kind of um, criticism. Yeah, make sure your skin is well exfoliated and moisturized because this will cling to dry patches a bit. That's what a lot of people are saying. But like, I sleep in a cocoon of retinol every single night. So like, dry patches who? I, you know? seeing the same kind of criticism that I'm having about the the wear time. Let's see, what about a two star? One star is just gonna be like, if I could give it zero, I would. I didn't love this color match. Find it a bit dry. Find it a bit dry. Settled into fine lines. Smooth, but has a chalky dry feel. What? <laughs> I don't know guys, I am just not having the same experience as other people. Like I, if anything, it starts to break up on me a little bit because it's so hydrating. So, just bear that in mind, It you know, for $89, I want you guys to have like a, a full scope of, of expectations here. Good catch, Khaki. Can't like reflexes. This here, La Gloss Lux Lip Gloss is $58. It has daikon radish oil, a 100% natural emollient oil, chamomile flower, an antioxidant, and jojoba oil and vitamin E antioxidants. To me, first of all, calling out vitamin E when big vitamin E owns everything, they, that's just, don't ever call out vitamin E as an ingredient. Find me something that doesn't have vitamin E in it. And then chamomile, daikon, there are no proprietary ingredients in here. There's no just like, you know, ceramide XK47, like, you know, that's what I'm kind of expecting for a $58 lip gloss, but it's a pretty lip gloss, you know? Shade and Illuminate Blush Duo. Oh my God, I paid $90 for this? A skin perfecting blush with semi-matte and highlighter hues. Shade and Illuminate Blush is luxurious two-in-one powder cheek color formulated with rice silk powder available in six silky smooth, multi-dimensional shade duos. Each blush offers complementing semi-matte and highlighting hues for a light reflecting youth enhancing glow. Came here after watching Michelle Wong rave about it. Love how smooth and soft they look on the skin. I'm bummed I wasn't able to snatch Brazen Rose during the sale, but I still love this one. I don't really understand the hype. Sorry, this is a new one. The color is nothing special. It looks very matte to me. It is quite matte. 
I mean, I, you know, put a finishing spray on it and I wanted a little bit more mineral finish with my bronzer. It, it is quite matte. It has coverage. I think that that's the main thing is like, it's just, it builds coverage. Like you can't see my freckles as much underneath the blush. Gave it three stars. It didn't last through my 10 hour shift desk job. I like the Buxom primer infused blushes. State of Kate raves about those. I'm going to try them more and they are way less expensive and way more glowy. I have three of the shades. I love them all. Some with large pores. I have honestly never loved a blush before. I love these, everything. They're beautiful. Yibbity yabbity. Like why can't, ah, can I search red dots? No one says anything about red dots. What about Carmine? No one says anything about Carmine. Am I the only one afflicted with this issue? <laughs> it happens like through the day. I'll just look and there will be just like a red dot on my face or like 20. And then those eyeshadow palettes. All right, the Eye Color Quad eyeshadow palette is $89. Some of them are on sale for $44.50, which if you're playing along at home is half. If they have the TF stamped into the top of the shadow, that means that they are wet to dry. And if they don't, that means they aren't. Comes in like a million different shades. So beautiful. Like these color stories are awesome. They're really beautiful. Oh my gosh. I want golden mink. I want this virgin orchid that's on sale, although it's probably quite lavender. I think it's probably very, very cool. Oh my God. African violet is out of this world pretty. Wowzers. Holy macaroni. That is $89 and it gets 4.4 stars, 86% recommend. $88, I was expecting a lot more. Thought it'd be way better. The colors, when you swatch them, are nothing special. So actually Amanda and I were talking about collab video because she bought a bunch of Tom Ford stuff at the sale, but she bought like just slightly different things than I did, different colorways. She got the other foundation and stuff like that. So expect on her channel, she will be coming out with a review pretty soon. She doesn't do things in exactly the same format that I do, but she does show like really amazing close-ups and everything. And you'll be able to see a lot of the, you know, other stuff from the line over there. And she's also been in love with his stuff for a while. Other than that, I think it is time for me to move into my final thoughts for you guys here. So I hope that I have provided kind of a multi-dimensional nuanced set of expectations for these products and shown you really like what they look like in action on the skin, because that's way more important than my like up or down vote on something. I don't know what kind of customer you are. You know what I mean? I don't know what your expectations or your wants or your needs are from an individual item of makeup and or your budget. Some people are probably just watching this for fun because it's just like, hey, let's watch khaki. That's fun. And you know, you're it just not not gonna spend $90 on a, on a blush. And like, <laughs> good, good for you. I will start by saying no one needs to spend this much money on makeup, period, full stop. You can go to the drugstore and get things that are going to like, go watch my last drugstore video. I found some incredible things, some really beautiful stuff, like my old holy grails and stuff, just really, really outstanding formulas. And if I'm comparing one to the other, this is not, 10 times better than those products for being 10 times the price. That I can say across the board. It's about whether or not this is important to you, you know, to be playing with like Tom Ford makeup. But like, I think one big call out here is that uh, like most of the time when you're paying this much for a product, there's something that's a differentiator besides the performance of the product. Typically there are skincare ingredients, more than just a basic antioxidant or something. There's kind of some kind of like rare flower or something in it, at least a claim to that effect. I'm like, we're not even bothering. I will say there are no fragrances in the complexion products, which love that, love that because all the other ones do. But starting with the foundation stick, where did it go? Literally, it's what the video is about. Kaki, what do you do with things? Again, I got 0.0, .0 pearl. <laughs> I will continue wearing this because it gives me a really, really beautiful finish on my skin. It is very, very hydrating. I think that it's absolutely gorgeous, but it's not perfect. And for $89, I want it to be perfect, okay? There are things that wear better than this. I can't think of them right now. I bet people will be asking how it compares to Westman Atelier. I like it better a little bit than the Westman Atelier just because it's thinner on the skin, but the Westman Atelier does crease. It's just got a clean beauty formula. It's just what it does. You know, it's going to crease a little bit. I wear it so 
whisper light on my face. I don't smear it on my face like a regular foundation. So it's like hard to really compare, but I would never wear the Westman Atelier like I put this on today, you know? With the right powdering and setting sprays and stuff like that, you can probably get a good amount of wear time out of it, but like, I think that the performance of this foundation really depends on your skin type and your climate, like where you are and what the season is. It's gonna be beautiful for me and my dry skin in the winter, but I probably will back shelf this in the summertime because it just kind of is prone to breaking up, even on me, someone who does have stinking dry skin, okay? I love the hydration of it, but like for something like this, it's not even so much like wear time because I want it to look perfect like a mask all day. It's just that, you know, it, it does wear in a way that you can see if it starts to break up, which isn't something that I usually encounter with foundations because I usually wear things that are more skin tint value, you know, as far as coverage is concerned. And so they wear in instead of wearing off, this wears off and you do notice it a little bit more, especially the more you put on. I, again, you saw, you saw me put like a pretty, I would say modest amount of it on because I you know, balanced it out with some other things and the color that I got is really light, etc. So it really is gonna depend on how you wear it, but um, you know, I, I hope that I present the, like, the nuance of that here because this is not a perfect product. Especially when I experience things that are euphoric, you know what I mean? There's nothing about putting that on that's like euphoric, but like I look awesome, I do. Like my skin looks super smooth and pretty, but it has to do with all the other products too. So speaking next about the blushes. <sighs> Carmine, why are we still doing it? They're not the only ones doing it either. I have experienced it with a few different luxury blush formulas. So um, it's not just, you know, targeting them, but the colors are gorgeous. And understand that this is a very unique formula in the sense that it does blur and it actually adds coverage. It's pretty stinking matte. It's funny that they say that this is a highlight shade. There's zero reflection in that. It's highlight in the sense that it is a highlighted color. It is a lighter color than the other blush, but it is not shimmery at all whatsoever. None, not even satin. That is like an expectation that I, you know, want to set with this. Again, $90 for a blush is bonkers. 0.22 ounces, 6.5 grams. And um, you know, the packaging's really pretty and everything. And it, it's a luxury vibe. It just is. And the way that it performs is unique. That's where I'll leave you with that. It's just about whether that's worth your money. The two eyeshadow palettes, you know, I have these really weird feelings about these because this, I'm gonna keep reaching for it because it works really well for my skin. Like that, that is like the most absolute thing I can say about this because I have absolutely no idea how it would translate to another person. Probably not super well across the board, you know, but he has a ton a ton of colorways. Rich, gorgeous, cool, warm, pale in this sense. Just understand that naked pink is for pale people, okay? This is, it's not gonna show up on a lot of people. Like, you might get the celestial, I mean, you'll get the celestial shade, you might, you might get the, the coppery pink, but like, these are, these are just not gonna show up on a lot of people. So, you know, for this colorway, uh, that would be my, my main, thing to point out, but also the formulas just understand that like they're not makeup artist owned type formulas where everything's really like rich and wapow and super satisfying. They're washes of color. Now, <laughs> this is unique and gorgeous and the formula is so awesome. Like it's really, really satisfying to put on, especially when we are talking about kind of mixing a one and done vibe, mixing your textures to really achieve something new and different, but also still really wearable on, on your eyes. The sensation that you get <laughs> when you are dipping a wet brush into this and like painting onto your skin, it feels like total freedom. It's so awesome. It really is like working with like magical paint if that's your thing. And they also work pretty beautifully as dry shadows. I feel like for the claims, for the functionality, these really work flawlessly. I would highly recommend going into a Sephora store and looking at the colors and swatching them if they'll let you because there are so many colorways that it really, especially if you're gonna spend this much money, it really is about finding the one that you're gonna wear the most often and that you're going to truly, truly love. And for 
all of those caveats, if you can find the colorway that just blows your mind, this formula gets my full endorsement. It is out of control. It is real good. And the lip glosses. Fam, these are weird, okay? Like, I like them. I'm going to keep this one. I might return this one. I'm gonna kind of try it with a couple other looks and see if maybe this was just a little bit too, like, overall berry-toned because this is, like, the most lavender thing I've ever seen. And it's just weird because it was actually hard for me to find one that I truly was excited about. I guess that, like, you know, there are some that are just kind of, like, a sparkly, peachy, whatever, but, like, they're all very extreme. When you look at the swatches online and stuff, they are, I want to say, real swatches, and they're very milky and they're very pigmented, even for like the palest, palest shades. And for that reason, I feel like it's kind of a, a buyer caution, you know, like just take a hard, long look at the shade before you spend this much money on a lip gloss because the colors commit. They're there. They're not backing away. Whereas like, you know, my favorite, like truly regular sticky lip gloss formula is Pat McGrath. And um, those shades, I think I could wear every single one. <laughs> you know, I can get away with wearing all of them because they're just easier. They're easier to work with. The pigmentation is right. It's really, really dialed in. And I'm not saying this pigmentation is wrong. It's just surprising for a lip gloss, like how much pigment there really is. Especially like when you're thinking about like how a lot of the luxury eyeshadows kind of back off on pigment the lip products, these are like really going for it. So yeah, um, I really enjoy this. This is the most luxurious packaging out of all of them though. It's like the heaviest. Ooh, it's so pretty. Yeah, that concludes my thoughts on uh, this selection of Tom Ford and my first episode of Sticker Shock. Let me know you guys thoughts about this going forward down in the comments. Let me know what other details you might find valuable in future versions of this video, but I hope that this was helpful for you guys. If it was, give it a thumbs up. If you wanna keep hanging out with me on this channel, hit the button down below and subscribe. I would love it if you guys did. Thank you so much for watching and for hanging out with me today. I love you guys so much and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.